Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to your 8th responsive design tutorial and in this video we're going to start making our mobile styles. <laughs> Alright then guys, so this is where we left off last time. We did our first media query at 768 pixels and that was targeting most kind of tablets and this is how it looks for desktop and then when we get to that break point at 768 pixels it looks like this, okay? So we've just given everything a little bit more space in the navigation. Down here, these are bigger and more space down here. So now what I want to do is start targeting um, smaller devices such as mobile phones. And to do that, I've made another breakpoint down here, which is 480 pixels, because I think pretty much everything still continues to look all right until 480 pixels. Let's just get to around about there. And uh, I still think that this looks all right. There's still just enough room up here and these are starting to look a little bit squashed now. Um, same down here. So yeah, I think 480 pixels is a good break point to use for mobile devices, or mobile phone devices, Devices, can't even say the word. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start making some styles here. And the first thing I wanna do is these things around here, I wanna make these full width, so there's one on each row, and there's four going down. These things down here, I wanna make these full width as well, so there's just four rows of uh, different information. So we'll do that first. So we just need to copy these two styles which are targeting these and these respectively and paste them down here. And the featured LI, I'm going to set to about 90% width and I'm going to give them a margin of about 20 pixels. Oops, not in capitals. I'm going to give them a margin. In fact, I'll give them a margin of, yeah, 20 pixels I'll say, and then 5% left and right. And that's so they take up the full 100%. The 90% in width, then we've got an additional 5% on the left and 5% on the right, so that's 100% in total. So let's just zoom down a little bit. There we go. So that's what it looks like now for mobile devices. And as it gets smaller, it still looks all right. Perfect. Okay, so the lists down here will do something similar. I want to make these about 98% in width. And that looks all right. Looks nice and spacious. Okay, cool. So there's a couple more things I want to do. The first thing is these right here. Now at the minute they look squashed up and I want to make them all kind of one after the other going downwards. I don't want them left to right like this because there's just not enough room. So to do that I'm going to have to find out the rule which is currently controlling these. And if we go to these LIs we can see that it's these home menu LIs and we have a different one for the nth child, which are odd. So we're just gonna override all of these. Let's copy that style and paste it down here. And we'll just override all of them. So we'll say um, float none, because currently they're being floated left and right, okay? But we still don't have the 100% width and we have these little gaps here. So we'll say width is gonna be 96% all right, and that's a bit more like it, but we have these gaps here and there's not much gap here. So what I'll do is set a margin property of 30 pixels top and bottom, spread them out a little bit, and then I'll say 2% left and right, and I'll just put an important declaration there just so it overrides any of the other um, pseudo class rules where we're targeting nth child and things like that. Okay, so now they're all even and spaced out. Looks a lot better for mobiles. Okay, so I want to do a little trick right here for the banner because it's getting a little bit squashed. You can't read uh, this little bit especially and even this bit's getting quite small. So I want to show you a little trick and to do that I'll find out the rule currently controlling it. It's this image right here, so it's main banner image. So what I want to do is bring that down here and the first thing I'm going to do is set the position to be relative and I've set it to relative so that we can offset it left and right. Remember to offset an element on a page you need to give it a position property so I'm going to give it position relative so that we can do that. Then I'm going to set the width of that image to 180% okay now that's going to make it bigger which is fine but currently it's cut off. We don't want that. We want to bring this text back to the middle. So this is where we offset it, right? The page is 100% in width, yet we've set the width of the image to be 180%. Uh, percent. So it's going to finish somewhere around here. So we need to scoot it over to the left a little bit. And I'm going to scoot it over by 40%. So I'll say left. 
minus 40%. So it's going to go left 40% because 40 plus 40 is 80. And that makes up the extra 80. So it's going to centralize that image and bring it back to the middle. So what we've done is we've made it bigger and we've cut off a little bit of the image from the left and the right because it's currently going to be like this. Yeah, going behind. So then we've offset it with this left property and brought it back in the middle so we can see all the text and the text is a little bit bigger. All right. So that's all I'm going to do for this tutorial. I mean, that's the bulk of it done. It's going to look all right on mobiles. The only thing left really to do is this navigation here because it's really squashed. But I want to separate that and do it in a separate lesson because I'm going to make some JavaScript. We're going to edit the HTML and we're going to make a fully fledged mobile menu. So I'll see you guys in that lesson.